you're dealing with a lot of financial institutions, banks around the world. What are the challenges you have as Ripple dealing with them? Obviously, somebody's been making money on this process for many years. You're changing that. You're making it much more efficient. What are the challenges that you have working with the banks and financial institutions now? Yeah, so like the, the, the I mean, again, we were like really naive early on. So we thought, listen, Citibank, great, uh, you know, great company to go after. If we get Citibank on Ripple, you get, you know, one third of all cross-border payments on Ripple. That turns out Citibank likes to be slow because they make a lot of money being slow and they like to charge a lot of fees because they make a lot of, you know. So then we sort of thought like, who, who are, who's the, who's the, like the hungry ones? And so, you know, we started finding, you know, small uh, providers like, you know, Bex in Brazil. You may not have heard of them, but they're one of the fastest growing fintechs in Brazil. They're small and scrappy. They want to compete with the big guys. Uh, you know, Itaú is another client of, of Ripple. Uh, they are a small, uh, they're not a small bank in, in uh, sorry. All right. They're not a global mega bank like Citibank, but they are a, a massive Brazilian bank. Um, but they are a super regional bank. And using this technology, you can take a super regional player, a hungry player, and make them global and compete with the big guys like Citibank. And so that's like a powerful story to tell, you know, local super regional players, massive super regional players, but, you know, super regional players, use this technology to connect you to the rest of the world and offer something that Citibank can't offer its clients. And that is the ability to send any size payment, the ability to service e-commerce customers, the fastest growing segment of payments out there today.